The call of God is not just preaching only. The call of God is whatever He has called you to do in your profession. You must see your profession as God's calling. Can I amen? It takes an anointing to be a teacher. It takes an anointing to be a medical doctor. It takes an anointing to be, a, to be in the music. It takes a, To be a builder, it takes an anointing. And you see throughout the scripture, the people God called the anointed. When people don't know how to, to operate from the supply of the spirit, then they look for the supply of men. And supply of men is limited. Every time God lay something on your heart to do for him and it looks impossible he wants you to depend on is the supply of the spirit by the reason of the anointing on your life you can bring a word of comfort you can bring solution to people's life is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Uh -huh. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe this psalm is a, is a very common psalm that uh, except we take time to look at it with a, with a mind of trying to know the heartbeat of God, we can just read it casually and then that won't really do us any good. I believe that God truly inspired King David when he wrote the psalm. And he wrote it not just from the place of just trying to write something, from his own personal encounter with God. And even up to today, all over the world, David is still known as a man after God's own heart. He was not a man without his own fault. But God put a mark on his life that such that we have a lot to learn from him. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, came through his lineage. That's why he's called the root of Jesse. Because the name of the father of David was Jesse. So there must be something about this man of God who God inspired to write this psalm. In verse, um, verse 5, 
He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head <clears throat> with what? With oil. Now, that got my attention. Communion is a time we, we sit on the Lord's, uh, we sit and partake from the Lord's table. But I sense, reading out this verse of scripture, there is a connection between the communion and the anointing oil. Can I amen? It says you did not only just prepare that table, but at that table also, you anointed me. Which means that God expects you and I to not only just partake from communion, so to say, but go beyond the communion and, and receive more from God. Which means you must be a spiritual oliver tree. Say, I want more of God. Thank God for the song the choir just sang there. Because many of us, we are settling at the low level when God is saying, go up higher. Say, go up higher. This morning, may you go just beyond just the table, but press into God's oil. Say, God's oil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of what? My enemies. You anoint my head with oil. So what does it mean to be anointed with God by God? What does it mean to be anointed? When you're anointed by God, it gives you supernatural ability you don't have. Wisdom and insights you don't normally have to do a job he has chosen you to do. Every child of God, there is an anointing that God puts on you to do whatever he has called you to do. That's why no one has your thumbprint. Say with me, I have a unique call of God upon my life. The call of God is not just preaching only. The call of God is whatever he has called you to do in your profession. You must see your profession as God's calling. Can I amen? It takes an anointing to be a teacher. It takes an anointing to be a medical doctor. It takes an anointing to be, a, to be in the music. It takes a, to be a builder. It takes an anointing. And you see throughout the scripture, the people God called, he anointed. So when I'm talking about the anointing of God this morning, wherever you are, I want you to reach to God this morning and say, I received the anointing to carry out my function. Can I amen? Because the anointing is God's supernatural ability and wisdom to do whatever he has called you to do. You will never operate without his anointing. Amen. David said, you anointed my head with what? Oil. See my head with oil. You will see in the scripture, you will talk about the oil of joy, oil of peace, oil of salvation. Everything is connected with the oil. Now, it says you anointed me. Say you anointed me. And Jesus is called the anointed one. When you hear that word, Jesus Christ, Christ is not his last name, just like you and I, we have our last name, Paul Father you so you think, okay, Father Easy must be the surname. The surname of Jesus is not Christ. Can I amen? So Jesus Christ is called the anointed. When that word Christ means the anointed one. Say the anointed one. One more time. The anointed one. Amen. It's also known as called, called Messiah in, in, uh, in Hebrew. Say Messiah. Messiah. So when people call us Christian, that means that we are like the anointed one. If you take the word Christ out of Christian, the, two, the three last letters there is I-A-N. Christian. Take out Christ and you have I-A-N. I-A-N simply means I am nothing. So we think without Christ, I am nothing. So what makes you a Christian is the anointed one. And so that's why you must fully identify with him as the anointed one in your life. Say with me, his presence makes all the difference in my life. So because he's the anointed one and we are called Christian, God's plan and purpose for you and I is to be Christ-like. To be what? Christ-like. That's it. To be Christ-like. 
Within the few minutes I have this morning, I want to take you through the scriptures and show you six things we can learn from the Bible concerning the anointing. Six things. I'm going to make it as brief as possible. Six things we can learn from the Bible. When you look through the Bible in different instances and see how the anointing is related to how we live our lives. The first thing you can learn from the Bible with regards to the anointing is that when God appoints you, he anoints you. When God does what? Appoints you or he anoints you. Without the anointing, there is no appointment. And how many of you know that you are appointed by God? See, I'm appointed by God. Amen. An example of that is in 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 1 to verse 3. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 1 to verse 3, we read the account of Saul who was anointed, who was appointed and anointed. Let's read together. Go on. Now the Lord said to Samuel, "Uh How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill your own with war, with oil, and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Samuel hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take an ephah with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. So you shall anoint for me the one I name to you. The one who named you anointed you. And that's why you see he said to his disciples, just before he left the earth, in Act 1, 8, he said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So as his disciples, we are not without his anointing. We are not without his empowerment. The anointing is not to those who stand behind the pulpit. Those on the pew are anointed. It takes an anointing to be a parent. Can I amen? amen? Even those of us standing behind the pulpit today, if our parents were not anointed, in the midst of all the annoyance we, we gave them, come and talk to me now. It takes an anointing to be a parent. So within whatever he has called me to do, he has anointed me. The second thing you can see with regards to the anointing is that God's anointing transforms you from inside out. God's anointing always transforms a man from where? Inside out. It's a transformer. The anointing is what? It's a transformer. It transforms a man called Saul. Look at that scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 1. 1 Samuel 10 verse 1. Read everybody. Then Samuel took a flax of oil. What did he take? Not water. A flax of oil and did what? And poured it on where? Again, where again? The head. And kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? Prior to this time, Saul did not even believe himself. He was all out looking for the lost donkey of his father, as of his father, while God. Brought him to that place of being anointed. And then in verse 6 of that same first summer, after he, he was anointed, what happened? Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned to work into another man. Say transformation. The oil came on Saul, and it says you are turned to another man. Let it be. When these signs come to you, that you do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. His anointing also is, it's, is symbolic of his presence. Joseph was anointed. While he was carrying out his function as, you can call him a houseboy, 
in the house of Potiphar, a man who had no, not much to his name with regards to finances, but what he was carrying brought a change in the man's house. Potiphar's house, things change. He was a prosperous man. I pray in the name of, by the reason of what you carry, may there be change in your environment. See the anointing. When a man is anointed, you see three key things in your life. They will be competent, say competent, confident, and calm. That's one of the things. And I pray that this will be evident in your life. And whatever he's called you to do, whether you're a carpenter, whether you're a mechanic, whatever, you will be competent, you will be confident, you will be calm. The third thing also we can see through the scripture with regards to the anointing on a man's life or any person in any situation is that God's anointing makes difficult tasks easier. God's anointing makes difficult tasks easier. The task many times we'll have to address don't come easy. Don't come easy. But you can be confident that because of God's anointing on your life, what looks difficult becomes easy. I, I, I can't see myself doing any other thing in life besides what he's called me to do. I enjoy ministry. I enjoy pastoring. If, and this is not just because when I became ordained as a pastor. For some of us, pastoring is will be in us. God calls you even before people call, people ordain you as a pastor. I'll never forget many years back, I think shortly when my uh, uh, first daughter was born and we have uh, my grandmother who came to stay with us. And uh, I wasn't ordained as a pastor then. Then she looked and looked and looked at me and said, the work of God is so easy on you. She said it in my, in my dialect. And I just smiled. I pray in Jesus, whatever God has called you to do, you will do it with ease. If you ever find yourself doing something and you are always frowning, you are always complaining, this thing is hard, maybe you are not anointed for it. Because the anointing makes you confident, competent, and calm. So shall it be in your life. The anointing makes difficult tasks easier. That's in Ephesians 3.16, Ephesians 3.16 says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might. Say strengthened with might. Through his spirit in the inner man. Through his spirit in the inner man. The Holy Spirit. Because don't forget I said the oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit himself. The Holy Spirit on your inside. He says he will strengthen you with might through him who is on your inside. I was sharing about Acts 1.8 when it says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come up on you. Come up on you. What is in you comes up on you. What is in you comes where? Up on you say up on that's it so if you don't have it in you can't have it here I say with a thank god for the indwelling holy spirit and philippians 4 13 says i can do all things through christ and what did i say christ is the anointed one I can do all things through the anointed one who does what? Who strengthens me. Christ is not the last name of Jesus. That's all he represents, the anointed. I can do all things through the anointed one who strengthens me. Go ahead, clap your hand and give him praise this morning. Say, I can do all things through the anointed one who strengthens me. Yeah. I put here, there is a tendency for you to constantly feel tired without the anointing. I'm not saying sometimes you don't feel tired, but when every time you feel tired and tired, and you're a believer, it's really when you have to carry out your task. 
I don't, I can't stand someone else who say, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. I say, then go seek God's presence for the anointing. I can do all things. Serving God or whatever you're called to do, also we take, we, we place and demand on you. But aren't you glad in the law of economics, there's always the law of demand and work and supply. So when the life places a demand on you, there's a supply of the spirit. What does that say? When life plays a demand on you, there is always war, a supply of the spirit. That's what you need. Sometimes I'm even, I'm surprised at myself when I think of, I'll say to myself, how do one go? How do you go from year to year? From year to year, serving God. Preaching. And there's no, there's no syllabus on what you're going to preach. And from year to year, there's no syllabus on how you're going to talk. But the inward man supplies. Go ahead and clap your hand. And, uh, and that also applies to you. Because in this last, the arm of flesh will, will fail. When people don't know how to to operate from the supply of the spirit, then they look for the supply of men. Supply of men. And supply of men is limited. Number four, thing we can learn about the anointing from Bible is this. God's anointing makes the impossible possible. God's anointing makes what? The impossible possible. I have faced many impossibilities in my life. And I know I'm still going to face some tomorrow. But this is the confidence I have. The one who made impossible possible yesterday will make the impossible possible tomorrow. As long as there's a supplier of the Spirit of God, what looks impossible will be possible. Luke 18.27. Luke 18.27 says, read everybody, but he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Say that again. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And God from time to time will want you to believe in to make the impossible possible. Every time God lays something on your heart to do for him. And he looks impossible. He wants you to depend on is the supply of the spirit. I remember some years back when God laid on my heart to believe him for a particular project to be done. This was a personal project. And uh, around that time, the, the amount of money involved sound big. When you compare it to now, it's not, it was not big. But that time it was big. And along the way, I was beginning to doubt whether it will, be, it will happen. Then the Lord said, if you can't even believe me for this, how will you be able to believe me for something bigger I'm to do tomorrow? Because today's challenge will be a benchmark for tomorrow's breakthrough. It will be. And every time you are able to just pull through that, that becomes your reference point for what he's going to do. But it has to start from, so many people want to just rain from big, big things. If you've not conquered Goli lions and bears, how are you going to fight Goliath? But the same anointing that brought down the lions and the bear also brought down Goliath. May you see God do greater things in your life. And number five. God anoints your life to be, to bless others. So the anointing is not even all about you. The anointing on your life and my life also is to make us get to that point that we become a blessing. By the reason of the anointing on your life, you can bring a word of comfort. You can bring solution to people's life. See how many broken hearted we have in our society today. By the reason of the anointing, 
God can use to, to mend broken lives. So I think the anointing is all, it's not all about me. Yeah. And last but not the least, we see with regards to the anointing that for every new challenge, you need a fresh anointing. Every time you see God call people, it will also take them to face some new challenge. And every new challenge is for you to believe him for what? A fresh anointing. Say fresh anointing. Amen. Say me, I need a daily anointing for my daily task. Dear friend, I'd like to invite you to start a new relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ today if you have never done so. By A, acknowledge that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sin. And C, confess him with your mouth as your personal Lord and Savior. So say this after me. Dear God, I come to you today just as I am. A sinner in need of a Savior. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that he died for my sin. And on the third day, God raised him up from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as this prayer may sound, if you prayed it from your heart, God heard you. And guess what? You are saved. You are now a child of God. So I encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church wherein you can grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if there's any way I could be of help to you, please contact the number on the screen. I'll be more than happy to support you and to help you. Until next time when I come into your house, you keep on winning because God is on your side and you are destined to win. God bless you.